All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our early edition of our, our ad hoc training committee. Um, just as a reminder, uh, we will be going back to our regular scheduled time uh, starting next week at 6 p.m. Um, and then um, our commission staff will send out uh, an email like they did uh, today with uh, that as a reminder as well. Um, today, one of the things I think we were, we were just talking about doing is we were gonna talk about possibly having uh, PERT, the Psychiatric Emergency Response Team, uh, asking them to come in and give us a presentation and a training uh, to the full commission. We've had some cases, you know, over the last, you know, couple months where we've had either uh, PERT involved cases or cases where we thought it'd be helpful if PERT would have been able to be there on scene. Um, and since we've had a lot of commissioners that have questions about how it works when they um, are called and assigned, uh, we thought that would be something that would be beneficial. So I think for the beginning part of, of this meeting, we were going to touch base on, on PERT. And then the follow-up on that was, trying to formulate a, um, a training schedule uh, to bring it to the full commission to have uh, the commission and the community provide feedback and thoughts. And then that way we could work with the cabinet to um, get those scheduled at future commission meetings. Um, do you want to add anything to that? Easy enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Dawn, do you want to add anything at all? I mean, I know we were quickly touching based on PERT. I don't know if anyone wants to chime in. Lupe, I know you've had uh, some experience personally in the past on that. Um, yeah, as I said, we've, we've had some cases where commissioners have, have inquired why PERT uh, may not have been called. Um, and I think also hearing it directly from them rather than what we've heard. <laughs> uh, I know one of the things that we oftentimes hear is that there's only so many PERT clinicians that are um, like on schedule. Uh, and so I know they're working with the county to get additional budget. Uh, one of the things I had heard a year or more ago was that they're working on trying to get enough budget to have at least one PERT clinician in San Diego 24 hours a day. Um, but I don't know if that's ever happened. <laughs> and then also, even if that is happening, um, all of San Diego in the service area for SDPD, that's a huge area. So if you have an issue that happens, say downtown, and then there's an issue that happens up, you know, in either North or South San Diego, you know, you're not going to necessarily have a PERT clinician that's going to be able to show up within, you know, the next five, 10, 20 minutes you know, it could be longer, which, you know, as we know, when we have a mental health call, you know, things can escalate rather quickly sometimes in, you know, five, 10 minutes. So, um, with so Gloria, Gloria basically asked us if we could find a contact um, and help do the logistics to schedule it. And um, my first question is, what exactly do we want them to present? Because on our cat case review training academy outline, we list a PERT representative presenting on best practices regarding resources and procedures for dealing with the mentally ill. Sounds like maybe what you're talking about is not that presentation, it's something different. So then that probably is something we should add to our list of special topics. Um, but what is that? What, what is the presentation? What are we asking for is my first question. Yeah, and years years ago, um, this might even have been back with CRB. Uh, we did have um, I don't know if he's like the executive director or what his official title was, but we did have him uh, come in and he gave us a presentation. And part of that included kind of why they were set up, how they um, hire their staff, and kind of what their qualifications are, what they're able to do, and probably more importantly, what they're not able to do, um, and just the framework of how that works. I think that might be helpful. Um, because I think what we've, what I've seen is we have a lot of people that ask questions about kind of the structure of how does that work? When does someone get called? Um, is it when someone calls 911 or the non-emergency number and it goes to dispatch? Is that when that happens? I think having them come out and say, you know, based on how many per clinicians we have in the field, here's how that works. And I think an, an interesting thing, you know, I personally think would be helpful is for them to kind of explain the difference between a PERT trained police officer and a PERT, clean, PERT trained clinician, um, because those are different things. Um, and so, for example, I know when I've seen body worn camera where you you do have a PERT clinician that comes on scene uh, because it's a medical call, that's one of the times where they will actually turn off, officers will turn off their, their body camera if there's a clinician there. Now, if they're a PERT trained officer, they don't. So I think some of those things would be helpful um, for commissioners to be able to ask questions um, because to be honest, I'm sure there's questions that I probably wouldn't have thought of that will probably come up from other commissioners. Um, and I think they can kind of explain, you know, what they are able to do uh, because, 
you know, I, I know we've had several cases where people are like, well, why wasn't PERT called? Or if they were called, why didn't they get there fast enough? Um, and I think that might be helpful for people to be able to inquire directly from the PERT staff as to what they're able to do. And I think it's, I said a little bit earlier, you know, I know the county was working on getting additional uh, funding for them, but I, I don't know if that's ever happened. And I think, you know, obviously hearing, you know, what, what maybe has been budgeted and also maybe what they're trying to work on in the next, you know, six or 12 months, that might be an interesting thing for us as well. But um, I, I, I think kind of like a background of how calls get placed and how they show up is probably good. And then I think the rest of it, I think is exactly what you were talking about, which is kind of the, the ins and out, outs of, of how that works. Yeah, can I suggest NAMI too? Because they've also um, have direct contacts with um, PERT. Because when I used to go to the NAMI meetings, I actually took some classes on communication with loved ones about mental health illness and that sort of thing. And they also, they would bring PERT people in to do a presentation and they talk to them all the time. So I don't know, maybe NAMI might be another okay. avenue of, well, NAMI uh, NAMI's already on our list yeah. for on the on the case review um, training academy list that's already been oh, good. adopted. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, for the for the best practices part. But the, is this presentation what I thought Brandon was saying is that this presentation would be only about hurt? hurt. But I'm right. I'm not saying which way we should go. I'm yeah, asking yeah. the question, which, which what, what are which, we trying to do here? Because that'll make a difference of what oh, our request is. Because NAMI also has the peer-to-peer -peer program where they actually have prior um, people who currently have mental illness but are stable and they provide peer assistance to other folks that are not as stable. So they also have a different perspective. They're like community members. So that might be an interesting perspective to get a community member talking about their experience. And <laughs> I don't know, that's just an extra thing, you know? The only thing, and John, correct me if I misremember, I, I think the idea was the cabinet is hoping that we can help provide some topics uh, for maybe a mm -hmm. 15 to 20 minute session per mm -hmm commission meeting. So I think we just need to make sure we don't load that training session with too many things, because I think, although your, your point, I think is great and very well taken. I don't, I don't think we can get PERT and NAMI to both be able to give us a good substance in 20 minutes. Oh, but not in the same day though. I'm talking <laughs> yeah, exactly. about, yeah, you know, cutting them up into different days yeah. to whatever, you know, different meeting sessions, whatever it's, it would be overwhelming if you have both of them there, you know? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So I guess what I can do is I can reach out tomorrow and try to get, I mean, I, I found their, their base phone number and I can try to get, you know, someone who can uh, come out and give us a presentation to find out, you know, if they, I'm sure they already have a standard kind of PowerPoint presentation that they can give and I can maybe see what that is. And then I can report back to, to everyone here um, and, and let you all know, but I mean, I think that's probably our best first steps is do that initial outreach, see what they might have, you know, when they would be able to do it, how long that training um, session is. And we can let them know we're thinking, you know, 15, 20, I mean, maybe 30 minutes. I mean, we can see how much time we can, we can get on the agenda from, you know, the chair, but um, that's probably, I think a good first step. And then if there's anything that is maybe not in that PowerPoint outline that they have, we can say, Hey, we're also curious about, you know, X, Y, or Z, and see if they can add that in there. So if that's okay with everyone, I mean, I'll, I, I can make those calls tomorrow morning and then I can send an email before we have our, our next uh, meeting on Monday. And that way we can hopefully have some information before we have our next commission meeting. Does that work with that's everybody? Fine. That's fine. Okay. All right, I've taken some notes. I will work on that tomorrow morning and I'll let you guys know what's going on with that. Um, do you want to pick up the other <laughs> the other piece we were talking about? Yeah, sure. I just I am just putting a note in our special topics because we have a line item for that. I'm just going to say Brandon following up. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, Gloria has reached out as the chair 
Chair Tran has reached out and asked us to make some suggestions for what um, trainings might be good to have during the during full commission meetings. And um, I I had originally thought that the the training academy list that we made are our request to staff to actually make those things happen. Um, but it sounds like staff is spread thin. I'm sure Yasmin can uh, confirm that. And so they would like us to um, help out uh, in figuring out what those things might be. And because as Brandon said, this idea is doing it during a full commission meeting that it is not a long um, time. Like. I think she said it could even be as long as 30 minutes, but that would be the max, including questions. Um, so anyways, I put that out there. When you all look at the, the things that the full commission has already approved, which is the onboarding and the case review, what ones do you think would be good to prioritize? And then I think given her direction from, um, related to this PERT team thing, I think she would want us to do the legwork to try and find the people and coordinate, you know, with the cabinet to get it on the agenda and all of that. Is that your understanding as well, Brandon? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, part of it is I was hoping we'd be able to kick some of this to to staff. And I know maybe once we've, we've hired up a little bit more, that might be more doable. Um, you know, I know for all of us, I won't say all of us. I know some of us are, are retired, but many of us have other competing responsibilities. And I know for me personally, I just don't want, uh, you know, my other engagements to delay how we're trying to get training. So, I mean, maybe if we are going to go that route, maybe what we can do is we can kind of assign it out to, you know, maybe each topic, one of us can try to help call and see what we need to do. The one thing Darlene and I had a, a conversation about at the last meeting was, you know, we're not always the subject matter experts on some of these topics. So uh, one of our concerns, well, uh, my, one of my concerns, I don't want to speak for anybody else, is I want to make sure that we're not, we're not going down one path thinking we have the best answer for a presentation uh, for training, and then find out that maybe there is a better resource out there just because we're unaware of what some of those options and those resources are. Um, but I mean, we can definitely do the best we can <laughs> with what we have. Um, but I mean, I think what we can do actually, John, do you have up your, um, the training handy? If not, I can try to pull it up. I was gonna say we can share it and then we can at least say what we think are the number one priorities. Although I think we, I felt like we already kind of did that when we had basically created that document and then we had the full commission. I, I um, basically emailed you um, after Gloria reached out mm -hmm. to us and um, I, pulled a few off of the onboarding and the case review list. Remember that? That's yeah, like a subset. And so I can- I shared that on one of I our meetings. Yeah, go ahead. If you have it, you can share it. Otherwise I'll try to pull okay. up the email. All right, it's just, my, it's just my email to you. I don't know what everybody else thinks, right? I mean, <laughs> my two cents. When I shared it last time, um, so here you can see, can you see that? Okay. Do you, do I need to make it bigger? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. How do I do that? Um, or if you want, you might be able to open it into a smaller window. All right. You know what I'll do? Cause I think I know how to control font better. If you'll just be patient with me for a second. There's many ways to skin a cat, right? Is this one I know how to make bigger? Hopefully no one is skinning any cats, darling. <laughs> How's that? Is that big enough? Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. So um, those are the things. So basically uh, none of us are tracking our time, which uh, I think would be helpful when communicating what we're doing like to city council or I don't know how they use this in the past, but I, apparently it's, it's helpful to know how many hours 
commissioners are spending doing this work to justify the budget request or I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's that's one thing that might not be longer than maybe a 15 minute to 30 minute training. Um, I think the the code of ethics stuff, I don't know if that's still needed. We've been talking about ethics a lot at the commission meetings. I don't know. I don't really, I didn't read the NACL code of ethics, so I don't know how that's different than what we've already covered. Um, the overview uh, and the principles of civilian oversight, it seems like people have been exposed to it a little bit, but it doesn't seem to me like we've really gotten a formal introduction to that. Um, I know when we first had, moving on to this history of the oversight at San Diego PD, um, you know, people probably have picked up on that. There was a little bit of it our very first time when we were sworn in in August, but once again, it wasn't really a official, you know, it didn't seem complete to me necessarily, but maybe it was enough. And we most definitely have not covered POBAR at all. So that's the, like the onboarding kind of background stuff, but I don't know, maybe those things aren't our priority. Maybe it's more important for us to be really skilled at case review and um, talking about witness reliability and um, the process of decision-making, how our biases may come in. Maybe that's more important and we wanna prioritize that. Talking about you know officer-involved shootings, we've had a little bit of that what we've had like two officer involved shooting cases so far um and maybe you know understanding the legal perspectives of the pd is important i don't know all those nuances and then the last two the racial and again i'm probably and then like internal affairs those of us who did the tour at the at the police department that i think that was supposed to be our overview of internal affairs and I don't know how everybody else felt, but I didn't, I didn't think I got a sense of how they do their jobs and what their flow is. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't seem like, I don't understand how internal affairs works after that. So anyway, those were the, that's the subset I pulled out, but you guys can all disagree with me and think something else is more important, whatever. Yes, I see your hands up. You can go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to just quickly flag that the Operating Procedures Committee is currently working on the case review procedures, so I would recommend we wait for that specific training until they do some of that work, um, because it may be changed. Okay, I think we had, um, we had proposed as one of the easier uh, training components to get going quickly is that first item, which is the timekeeping, uh, the better management timekeeping system. Um, that would be done, I think, if I remember correctly, I think Alina and um, our interim executive director, I think we're going to do that presentation. And I think that's something that'd probably be 10 to 15 minutes. So it's pretty kind of short and sweet, but I think it gives everyone the ability to, to learn how to do that. The other thing that I, I personally think would be probably helpful is because um, I know when we've discussed cases in closed session, uh, the police officer bill of rights has sometimes come up a couple times. That might be something that'd be helpful to have, um, have that training before I think some, some of the others, I mean, if we're going to stay just in the onboarding piece, um, I mean, those are kind of my thoughts there. I mean, I think we did a very high level kind of decorum and code of ethics thing, but I mean, that was, I think when everyone was just barely starting. So that might be something that we may want to revisit just because we've all now kind of been doing it for several months. I think it might, it might, I don't want to say it won't be a fresh topic, but I think revisiting it now might be interesting. Now that we've actually applied the work, we can actually see how that kind of ties into that. Um, I know we have it under case review, but I think the impacts of racial and identity profiling, that seems to always be a hot button topic. And I think that's something I don't know, we might be able to pull that outside of the case review piece um, because I think that's more than just case review. I think that's, you know, when you have like pretext stops, for example, I think those are things that we can discuss. I know we did have, um, I'm trying to remember when it was, it was 
maybe August or September, uh, we did have um, the ACLU come in and they gave a presentation. October. October. Okay. Yeah. You have a better memory than I have. Um, well, we got sworn in in August. So, yeah. I knew it was quickly after we all started. So um, I think that might be something uh, that I think also for the community, I think is important to, to get information on. Do you on think and, we could do that, that in a half hour, the profiling thing? I mean, it's a lot, but I think probably so. Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering if there's space where some of these are were able to request a little bit of extra time because of like the because of what the the training will be. Mm -hmm. um, I think others we can definitely get away with fifteen to thirty minutes, but some of them will definitely need more. I'm wondering if there's space or like flexibility there. I can reach out to um, Chair Tran and and inquire. I mean, she had had shared with us she'd like to keep it to like thirty, um, but I I think some of these topics are really important, heavy topics that I, I don't want to do a disservice and have a presentation that we're only scratching the surface of it personally. Um, but I, I can reach out to her and I can use that as one of the examples of something we might want to have a little more time to be able to have a, a good thorough training on it. So Dwayne, what are you thinking? Can you even see the screen? Do you know what I have on my list? <laughs> You might be muted. I'm sorry. What did, I, what did you say? I was saying, can, I don't know how you you've logged in. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. And so I don't know what your what's your opinion about what type of training we should recommend for the next available moment for a commission meeting. And uh, you know what. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think what you guys were saying was fine. I didn't see anything different from it. I don't know. I don't, I didn't come up with anything different. Okay. Like the, there's not some burning topic. That I you just think been, is super I've been important. following you guys. I really haven't been saying much. Everything you guys have been saying is, is fine. Okay. All right. The one thing that I Am do I feel about. No, nope. yeah, we can hear you. No, we, the one thing I do think about this whole list, though, it's like the things that Brandon was highlighting, the system tracking, the POBAR and the ethics. It's like staff needs to do that, right? Yeah. Well, um, the decorum and ethics, I think Doug was the one that had done that. Um, I know at least with the But decorum, it wasn't the whole, the, the decorum and right. the ethics wasn't the whole thing, right? It was a subset, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it was really more the kind of the proper decorum and the Robert's rules of order of how to conduct meetings. And we, we can hear you. Oh, it's everybody keep freezing on my end. Oh, okay. the signal. Hmm. Well, I think if we propose those four things, um, if the cabinet agrees, I mean, that would carry us, you know, for about two months of uh, meetings for some training. So, I mean, that at least gives us a little bit more time to try to create the the overall calendar. Um, I think it might take four months because I don't know if uh, Gloria intends on doing it at both meetings. Okay. I thought she wanted to do it at each meeting, but. Oh, okay. I, that's what I thought, but I mean, it's, um, I know sometimes there's a lot of other things going on. So yeah, I mean, I would, if we go fast, it's a minimum of two months, but to your point, probably closer to three or four. Okay, um, that makes sense. Can I, uh, is adding the technical affairs and the onboarding is an issue? I don't know. I've seen some commissioners struggle with trying to get, well, including myself, I should include myself in that, but it, it took me a little bit longer or maybe not. I don't know. I can't remember to access some of the files and really get to know the technical aspects of getting the files. And um, I don't know if that's included on the onboarding, but maybe not. Maybe it's not that important, but just getting some feedback about that. Um, you know, because it is... We do. It is 
it is on the orbit onboarding list. Okay, I and, didn't see it in that um, list. Is it in the formal me, one, the longer one? Let uh, me see. Let me, uh, let me yeah. get that for you. Um, da -da 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 -da. I'll share my screen again. And I think when people have trouble, it's then it has to be a one on one thing. Mm, okay. Um, but let me. It was, yeah, distribution of laptops and instructions for use, number three. And how do I make this bigger for you to see? Accessing the um, IA files and CPP files on the Google Drive, share drives. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a while because I hadn't used Google Drive in a while, but, you know, I kind of I caught on <laughs> after more, more time using it. You know, I think people tend to catch on you know um mm -hmm. it's just sometimes you know where to turn to for it if there's issues that come up like for instance i think they took care of that issue of that window that kept popping up but that's that's nothing though the windows operating system that was going to expire you know that some kind of error message that was appearing on everybody's laptop when they opened it <clears throat> but that's fine it got got cured got taken care of but it's just a, a side thing, a side note. I think you already addressed it. Well, the one thing I would say for you, Lupe, if you're still having trouble, the person who helped me the most was Olga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I communicate with Olga about getting okay. yeah, That's how I did it in the beginning when I was having difficulty getting the files and stuff like that. So far, I and, haven't had any trouble with the files and getting that. And the other thing I would say, Brandon, about the um, racial profiling Specifically, it's the impacts one. So that would be, I don't know, Yasmin, if that's something that you could help pull together because that's well, on our on our list. It is um, community members. So uh, like, for example, people erroneously in the gang database, uh, the Coalition for Police Accountability and Transparency, um, the woman from Alliance San Diego, that would be something. So that would be longer than a half hour probably to do a panel thing. That's what that's what that one is. I don't know if that's what you were thinking of, Brandon. I'm happy to um, support put that together. I'm wondering, Commissioner Harvey, would you also be um, down to help with that? Because I know you hold a lot of those relationships. Awesome. So, me and Commissioner Harvey can work on that. What would be helpful? Um, should we select a date? Uh, do we should we wait until you all can confirm if we can have it longer? Um, a little bit unclear on next steps. I was thinking next steps is uh, Brandon was going to share with Gloria our list of the ones we have, and then. Um, we would wait for the cabinet to be ready to schedule things, right? Or basically that's the, yeah. the ask of her. Gloria, please let us know what dates you want these things to happen so we can help facilitate. And okay. I was also gonna ask if we would be able to have a, a training that would be more than 30 minutes on, on you know, topic appropriate versions. Um, and I was also thinking that one of the first things we could possibly do would have have Pert come in, um, because I think right, that's, so that's a the, fifth. Yeah, that's a fifth thing. Yeah. So should we um, maybe look at for the this one? Probably look at dates for the June meetings or May, maybe end of May meeting. I'm just not sure. I think we just need to hear back from the cabinet and and. Okay. Um, Chair Tran, because I, I'm not sure what her idea was, and I don't want to, I don't want to decide <laughs> the schedule for them. <laughs> I want them to be able to kind of say, "Hey, we're thinking of next month, or you know, late this month, or whatever it is." Um, so what I'll do is, I've already started pulling up an email. I will send that to her later this this evening, um, and then as soon as we get any information back, we'll share that with all of you guys. Awesome. I will say just um, from the the ones that require a panel, it would be helpful to have a couple of dates and options sure. that accommodate people's schedules. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it too, it, it depends on what their, their calendars are and their availability. Um, so, and we could shuffle things around based on when we're trying to have a training and when they actually have availability to be able to show up and, and come in. So 
Um, it's going to be a little bit of a logistics thing, but so right now we have, it looks like five uh, topics. I think the fastest one is the, the, the uh, timekeeping because that's staff and it's, it's easy for us to do. Well, and um, I think that the, the POBAR one, we said legal counsel would do that. Right. And then I just looked up the ethics part and the presenters for the ethics part is a NACOL video. So we don't have to do that during a meeting. I wouldn't think that would just be staff sending a link out to commissioners and saying, review it on your own, right? Yeah. But I, I'm not sure. I think because there's no notes left to it, like we said, yeah, the NACOL video is it, but I don't have a link to it in this document, the, the onboarding document. And uh, just to flag in, last that I heard about the, um, the management, the butter management system, um, I was told that Alina's creating a video for that to take it off, like off of the meeting time, but okay. I have not, this was a couple weeks ago at minimum, so I'm not sure what the update there is. We actually have not discuss trainings in a staff meeting. Um, so I'm happy to ask to add it to our next agenda and, and see how we can support. Okay. So do you know about that Nicole video, um, Brandon? Did you ever watch that one? I think I watched it a long time ago. I'll have to track it down um, and then I can, I'll share that email. I made a note to, to get that link. Yeah, because maybe we don't want to recommend that for a meet for a meeting. I yeah, I'd agree. I think having us all sit there and watch a video, I think is not the best use of our time. No. So really it would be perch, pobar, and the profiling thing. If yeah. if it can be more than 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least that buys us, you know, a month or so minimum, mm -hmm. a month to two months of time to get more planning done. And maybe actually um, confirm that about the system tracking thing, if that's going to be an out of, you know, not part of the meeting time. I have a question. The new people that uh, came on board recently, um, have they also seen the video on the, um, uh, ethics city or, or not just city ethics but the one about um the brown act i'm just wondering because the brown act was very confusing for me when i first came on board yeah i don't know yeah. what they've been given yet yeah um, yeah okay i don't yeah, um, mean do you know they have not been given any trainings from my knowledge yeah. Okay. okay. And that, that was on a video, right? I can't remember. <laughs> it was only a few months ago. Was it on a video through the city well, I think, or something? No, I think that what you're thinking of, that was the um, ethics. That was the ethics. Right, right. Training, yeah. So Where the brown. Little, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The brown was, oh, it was covered in the uh, presentation by council. That's right. Right. Yeah. I will email Alina now, ask about the video. Um, Don't you have to leave pretty soon, Brandon? It's I was going to leave in, in four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, because it's 20, 20 of. Yeah. Well, I think we might be done. Well, that makes it even better. Okay. Yeah, what do you What perfect. do you all think? I mean, rather than dive into something new. Yeah, no, I think that's perfect time. Perfect timing. What do you think, uh, Anybody else <laughs> have an opinion besides me <laughs> or you guys? <laughs> As I say, what we can do is I can, um, I'll make those calls tomorrow morning and then I will also send the email to Chair Tran. And then um, I won't CC all of you guys on that email uh, to Chair Tran just because I don't think we need to swamp your emails, but I'll let you guys know what she says. And then um, I will give you guys, once we have information, um, either Joanne or I will, will give you guys an update of where we are before we have our next meeting. And then, um, you guys, I think I saw your hand pop up. Sorry, I was trying to put a thumbs up, but I couldn't <laughs> find it. Thank you, that sounds good. I saw on the video, I'm like, yep, <laughs> okay. Will you copy me though, Brandon? Yes, yeah, of course, yeah. All right, thanks. 
All right. Well, that makes it easy. All right, guys. Well, thank you for your time and being flexible on uh, moving the meeting a little bit earlier. Just a reminder, uh, next week, we're going to go back to our normal time at 6 p.m. Thanks so for that, right. we can adjourn our meeting. All right. All right. Have, have a good night, everybody.